Greetings, Body of Messiah. Mark Pulley here with Yahweh Yeshua Assembly in Fort Myers, Florida, bringing you another teaching of Yah's laws and commandments. Shabbat Shalom, everybody. I pray that your day is good. Pray that your week was good. I know some people have had challenging weeks, but nonetheless, the word of Yahweh says that he will cause you to triumph always in Messiah. It also says that he has given us the victory through Messiah Yahshua. So hallelujah. So today, what I want to talk about, I don't really have a name for it outside of, I want to talk about the things that Yahweh calls abominations. Abominations are basically the strongest word that you can come up with to describe something that Yahweh drastically opposes, drastically hates, and he declares that these things totally defile you and totally make you unclean. Now, the good news is that when you are in Messiah, you become a new creation, and old things have passed away and all things have become new. Now, that doesn't mean that because you've received Messiah Yahshua, you can continue living in a lifestyle that Yahweh declares and calls an abomination. And we'll get to what some of those lifestyles are. The price that Yahshua paid on the stake in Colossians chapter 2 where he took all the handwriting of the ordinances, which are man-made religious laws and traditions, as well as your sin, my sin, our curses for breaking Yahweh's laws and commandments, our sins, our sickness, our diseases, our poverties, our fears, our anxieties, he nailed them to the stake. Now, Christianity and churchianity has used that verse to justify them living in a lifestyle of sin, in a lifestyle of what Yahweh calls an abomination, what Yahweh says is a defilement, and what Yahweh says he hates, not dislikes, not that it just makes him a little upset, but he abundantly despises. Now, Christianity and churchianity tries to teach people that Yahweh is love, now that is accurate, that he is love, and that he accepts them in whatever lifestyle they are in. And that is so not true. He loves them, yes, and when they come out of the things that he calls an abomination, when they come out of a lifestyle of paganism, a lifestyle of adultery, a lifestyle of idolatry, a lifestyle of homosexuality and sexual perversion and bestiality and, and pedophiles and fornication and masturbation. When you come out of all those lifestyles, that's when you become a new creation and you can come out of those lifestyles because Yahweh's power, His Spirit, has made you a new creation 
on the inside and he gives you power to walk away from that lifestyle, that way of thinking, that way of living, that way of believing. Nowhere in the scriptures did Yahshua justify you for living a lifestyle of an abomination when you continue, <clears throat> excuse me, in that abomination lifestyle. The Messiah did not set you free from sin, from the penalty of that abomination lifestyle so that you can continue in idolatry, so that you can continue in sexual sin, or that you can continue in homosexuality, or you can continue in same-sex marriage, or you can continue in witchcraft, or you can continue in um, going to psychics and mediums and participating in any form of witchcraft. The Messiah did not set you free so that you can continue in that. That is something that man has come up with. That is something that I even know when we were in Christianity that most of the ministries that we're connected with, you were not born from above if you were continuing in that. But there are ministries that try to um, get you to think that all those things that are an abomination to Yahweh are acceptable. And that is what our nation has gone after. And that's what we're going to talk about. But first I wanted to lay the foundation that the Messiah, Yahshua HaMashiach, never paid the price for you to be delivered from darkness so that you could continue in darkness. It don't matter what your excuses are. It doesn't matter what your reasons are. It doesn't matter what your justification is. There is no justification to disobey Yahweh's laws and commandments and to think you're in right standings with him. The scripture says that Yahweh would write his laws and commandments, Jeremiah 31, 31, Hebrews 8, verse 8, that he would write his laws and commandments upon your heart and upon your mind. So, or in other words, that you would begin to learn to live according to his laws and commandments and that you would vacate everything that is an abomination to Yahweh and that you would begin living a lifestyle that obeys Yahweh's laws and commandments. Now let's turn to Leviticus 18, and we're going to pretty much camp out there because there's so many other scriptures that you could turn to, but this just will um, plant a seed and do your research in the Torah and just look at the life of Yahshua. When Yahshua caught the woman in adultery, now the, the, some say that he, the men were caught in adultery. They were the leaders of Israel. And they were, not in, they were not excused. But for whatever reason, they just point out the woman caught. Now, to me, it takes two to tango. But nonetheless, when the woman was caught in adultery in John chapter 8, what did Yahshua say to her? Go and sin no more. Go and sin no more. Stop living this lifestyle of fornication. Stop living it and start obeying Yahweh's laws and commandments. Everywhere Yahshua went, he never said, it's okay, because I know it's so hard for you, for you to, it's okay for you to keep disobeying the Torah and keep, you know, doing things that Yahweh called an abomination. 
He never said that. He never implied that. Paul never said that. Paul never applied that. Neither did Peter, neither did James. It was only Catholicism and Christianity, and churchianity, and people that were lo looking to justify their abominations. But in the end, you will not be able to justify it. What did Yahshua say in Matthew 7, 21 to 23? They said, Master, Master, we have done many things in your name, healed in your name, prophesied in your name, all this, that, and the other. And he said, away from me, I never knew you. You who practice lawlessness. Another version says, you who practice Torahlessness, or you who practice a lifestyle of abomination, you will be rejected by the Messiah, no matter if you say, Messiah, be the master of my life, and you continue to live a lifestyle of abominations that he calls abom abominations, that he says is defilement and uncleanness, that he says is contrary to being in Messiah, to being part of Israel, to being part of the redeemed. So we need to get that in our minds, and we need to not only live it, but start preaching it, regardless of how politically incorrect, how socially incorrect it is to this pagan lifestyle, this pagan abomination system that is governing our governments, that is governing our schools, that is governing our nation. We need to rise up and take a stand against it, and we need to preach, teach, and live what thus saith Yahweh. So in Leviticus 18, verse 1, it says, And Yahweh spoke unto Moses. So who's speaking here? Yahweh. Now understand this, and get this, that anyone that calls himself Torah observant, or that they say is a believer in the Messiah, or that says, or <clears throat> Yahshua, the Messiah, never and I say never, never, never spoke anything contrary or against what Yahweh speaks. So if someone tells you that Paul said something, <coughs> excuse me, and it opposes, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> it opposes, <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, the enemy's messing with me. Linda, can you bring me a throat lozenger? Excuse me. A throat lozenger. If anybody says that Yahweh <coughs> has said anything, or Yahshua has said anything that opposes what Yahweh has said, they are a liar, and the truth is not in them. Whoa, that sure uh, was an attack. That was an Aaron Rodgers throw. And a Jordy Nelson catch for all you Packer fans. But nonetheless, oh, sorry, excuse me on that. <clears throat> so, if anybody says that the Messiah said, or that Paul said, or that Peter said, or Christianity says, or any other minister of the gospel says anything, and it is contradictory, to what Yahweh said, the truth is not in them. What Yahweh said was unclean is still unclean. Yah Yahshua 
did not clean it, cleanse it. Yahshua did not come and say it's okay to defile Yahweh's laws and commandments. Or that, you know, for example, Yahweh or Yahshua did not come and he made poor clean. He did not say that. He did not come and say, just common law wife, living in fornication, living in same-sex marriage is okay. No, he never said that. What Yahweh says is unclean, is still unclean. So if anybody tries to tell you that the Messiah made something clean that Yahweh said was unclean, they are misinterpreting, misunderstanding, or they're playing out of darkness and they know not the truth. So understand that. I know that may be harsh words. I know that may be hard to swallow, especially if you are one of those that are living in a lifestyle that Yahweh says is unclean or that Yahweh says is an abomination. You are to come out of that lifestyle. Come out. When Yahshua cast out demons, he commanded them to come out of them. When you are born from above, Yahweh will put within you a passion to come out of that which is not right. <clears throat> Just like for me, in the 60s and 70s, I was a drug addict, I partied, I drank, smoked weed, uh, listened to rock and roll, went to satanic concerts, which are rock concerts. When I got born from above, the majority of that I knew I was to come out of. Now, I still wandered around in the music for about six to nine months until I came out of it through um, some teaching from my sister Gloria. And I still, for I think maybe a month, wandered around the drinking of wine because that's in the Bible, right? You know, but one day, you know, I got tipsy and I said, this is no different than smoking weed. This is no different than anything else. And I need to come out of it because getting tipsy, getting drunk, getting loaded, getting high, that's all part of that which is not right because drinking drugs whatever destroys brain cells it's part of the spirit of death it's part of what we ought not to be involved in okay so back to verse one and yahweh spoke unto moses saying speak unto the children of israel or Speak unto those that say they are in Messiah, and say unto them, I am Yahweh, your Elohim. After the doings of the land of Egypt, wherein ye dwelt, shall you not do. So there were things that they were doing in Egypt before they were led out of Egypt that Yahweh was saying that they were not to do. And there were our things that you were doing when you are, were in this world system before you became born from above, before the, Yahweh's laws and commandments were written on your heart, that you are not to participate in them. And then it says, <clears throat> After the doings of the land of Egypt wherein you dwelt, shall you not do and after the doings of the land of canaan where whither i bring you shall you not do so he's saying what you did in egypt and what the people the canaanites did in the land of canaan which i'm going to deliver into your hands you are not to do any of those things and we are going to see that there are basically three things that they were all involved in when they were in Egypt, when, when the Canaanites, all the ites, all that they were involved in. There were at least three things. One, sexual perversion, homosexuality, bestiality, sex with children, so on and so forth. 
You are not to do these things. They were involved in witchcraft. You are not to do these things. And they were involved in idolatry. Those are the three major things. You are not to be involved in idolatry. You are not to be involved in psychics and reading horoscopes and witchcraft and tarot cards and music of all types that are involved in witchcraft and in all types and every form of sexual sin you are not to be involved in, which includes uh, sexual sin, lying with a man, a man with a man, a female with a female, uh, sexual sin with an animal, with children. You're not to be involved in offering children unto Molech, which is what abortion is really about. It's offering your child unto demonic gods of Baal. Get it? So the doings or the practices that the people of Egypt and the Canaanites were involved in, you are not to be involved in. I would suggest do your research of what the Canaanites, what they were involved in, the abominations of the Canaanites and of Egypt because they were judged, the land spit them out, vomited them out, just like those defilements, and the land in our nation and in other nations are vomiting them out because of, that, of the abominations of that which they are doing, majorly in those three areas, idolatry, sexual sin, and witchcraft, the land will vomit you out. You will be an abomination. It doesn't matter what you say. It matters the lifestyle you are living. If you are living a lifestyle of an abomination that Yahweh calls an abomination, which would include all sexual sin, whether it's fornication, whether it's homosexuality, uh, pedophiles, whatever, whether it's witchcraft every all types of forms of witchcraft all the tv shows that that have witches and warlocks and witchcraft in it that's an abomination and our governments that that try to protect these that try to promote these lifestyles it is an abomination no wonder america is going through what it's going through this year in a shemitah year you are being vomited out of the land's mouth, you're being rejected by Yahweh, and Yahweh is issuing judgments that if you don't wake up, greater than these will come upon you, the wicked, those involved in, those, in these abominations. So he says in verse 4, you shall do my judgments, Yahweh's judgments, and keep my ordinances, the things that Yahweh says is permittable and the things that Yahweh says is not permittable, you shall keep. You shall keep the seventh day Sabbath. You shall have no other gods before you. You shall call his name Yahweh because in the Hebrew, that's his name. Not Yahuwah, not Yahshua. I mean, excuse me, Yahshua is the Messiah's name. Not Yahushua, not all these other different names but the names of Yahweh, the name of Yahshua, Yeshua, those are Hebraic names for Yahweh. They are the original Hebrew Aramaic names. Everything else is a man-made uh, tradition, a man-made name. It is not Jesus, it is not God, it is not Gad, it is not Baal, it is not Muhammad, it is not any other false name as well. It is not Jesus, it is, it is not these names. You shall keep his name separated, for his name is holy. And there are so many scriptures that says in the original Hebrew, my name is Yahweh, I am your Savior. 
My name is Yahweh. I am your deliverer. Doesn't say anything else in the original Hebrew. Now you can come up with any name you want and try to justify it, but nonetheless, that's his name. So Yahweh said in the original Ten Commandments to remember his Shabbat, to keep his name holy. He also said not to have any other gods before you. He also said, not to eat that which is unclean. I can't explain why he said. Most of that isn't food for nourishment. But nonetheless, he said it. I don't need to understand it. I just need to accept it, receive it, and begin to obey it. Okay, he says, You shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments, which if a man do, he shall live in them, I am Yahweh. None of you shall approach to any that is near of kin to him to uncover their nakedness or basically to have sex with them. I am Yahweh. And then it goes into the nakedness of your father, your mother. Um... And then it goes into your sister, your daughter, uh, and so on and so forth. So it's basically saying you're not to have sexual sin or sex with anybody in your family like incest. If you do, that is an abomination. And you are an abomination. You are unclean if you are living that lifestyle. And on, the only thing that can cleanse you is the power of Yahweh and you coming out of that lifestyle of abominations. If you're in pornography, if you're into pornography, that's an abomination and you are abomination. You are unclean, you are wicked, you are evil. Those that perform these things are evil, they're wicked, they're unclean, they're an abomination. I don't know how um, to stress this, this is not acceptable in Yahweh. This is not acceptable to the Messiah. This is not acceptable lifestyle to those that are Torah observant. Now, you can be set free and you can be made clean if you come out from among it, if you renounce it, and if you ask Yahweh to forgive you, through the blood of the Lamb. But you will not be clean if you keep going back to it. You will not be clean if you keep going back to the pig pen. You will not be clean if you keep going back to drug use or alcohol use. You will not be clean if you keep going back to masturbation. You will not be clean if you keep going back to the things that Yahshua set you free from and that Yahweh says is an abomination. You will only be clean if you come out from among it. Yeah, you may slip, you may mess up, you may go back once or twice or a few times, but eventually you're going to have to take a stand and depart from that lifestyle and depart from those people that are in that lifestyle and come out from among them and be separate, saith Yahweh. That's what Paul said. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6, to come out from among them and be set apart. The first thing, when I went through drug treatment, the first thing they told you to do if you wanted to be, to be set free is you have to leave your old friends. Whether it's family or old friends, you need to be set apart from them. They didn't know it at the time, but that's, being, that's obeying Torah. So then it goes, it goes, if you just read this and read this, you know, you know, it talks all about incest. It talks about sexual sin. And it goes really into detail. And then look down to verse 20. Moreover, thou shall not lie carnally with your neighbor's wife. Again, that's committing adultery to defile thyself with her. You shall not let any of 
Thy seed pass through the fire to Molech, that's witchcraft. Neither shalt thou profane the name of thy Elohim. And then he tells you what his name is. I am Yahweh. Yahweh. That's how you say it, the Tetragrammaton in Hebrew. I am Yahweh. I am Yahweh. Y-H-W-H. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. And that spells out same-sex marriage, same-sex relationships. It's an abomination. You are abomination when you live this lifestyle. But there is hope. If you come out from among it and you turn away from it, and you ask Yahweh to forgive you, and you receive the blood of the Passover lamb, he nailed that sin to the stake. As long as you keep living according to his laws and commandments and not keep going back to it. And that will mean you have to come out from that lifestyle. You have to come out from those people that you used to associate with. And there is no such thing in Yah's eyes, as same-sex marriage. I know a lot of people might not want to hear this, but nonetheless, in Yahweh's eyes, there is no such thing. And that's the only person's eyes that we care about. And then it says, Thou shalt not lie uh, with mankind as with womankind. It is an abomination. And that word, there is no word that is any stronger of a word that tells you that Yahweh hates it, that tells you that the creator of the earth and the Messiah despises it. And there is nothing that is more perverse or gross or ugly in his eyes than this type of lifestyle. And then he says, Neither shall thou lie with any beast to defile thyself. So when you have sex with an animal, you are defiling yourself. Neither shall any woman stand before a beast to have sex with it. There is nothing more perverted and gross and an abomination and a defilement than these. And he says it is a confusion. When you begin to think along these lines, it's going, to be, it's going to masterfully, demonically confuse you. And that's why people get confused, you know, that they may, they're a man and they think they're a woman. There is no such thing biblically. Trans, trans, how, how do you see that? Tra there is no such thing as transgender. You're either born male or you're born female, and that is who you are. Then it says, these nations, this is a note I wrote, these nations, meaning uh, Egypt and the, these Canaanite nations, have done this, that is incest, homosexuality, and witchcraft, and these things, Yahweh says, is an abomination. And then it says, the land is defiled. When you do these things, the land is defiled. The land is defiled. The land is defiled. That also means that we will not produce the fruit, the food that it needs to produce for you to eat healthy and for it to nourish your bodies the way the land was called to nourish your bodies. The land is defiled, therefore, because of the sin and the abominations of Egypt and in Canaanite, Canaanites, Canaan, which would witchcraft, sexual sin, and idolatry, it says, <clears throat> that the land itself will vomit you out and that he will visit the iniquity, 
the witchcraft, the sexual sin, and the idolatry upon that land and itself will vomit out her inhabitants. The land vomits out the people that are involved in homosexuality, the people that are involved in sexual sin, the people that are involved in idolatry, the people that are involved in witchcraft, the people that are involved in offering children to Molech, which is witchcraft and abortion, and the governments that support it. You shall therefore keep my statutes, this is Yahweh speaking, Yahweh, and my judgments, and shall not commit any of these abominations, neither any of your own nation, nor any stranger that sojourns among you. These are Yahweh's statutes, rules, laws and commandments and judgments. You are not to live according to the nations of Egypt. And how were they dealt with? They were judged and destroyed. How were the people of the Canaanites dealt with? They were judged, they were uh, uh, destroyed, many of them, and they were driven out by the force hand of Yahweh, by his power. He took what was theirs and he gave it to the children of Israel. He will, he will do the same thing to those in America and any other nation. He will drive the wicked out. He will destroy the wicked, and he will give it to those that are of Israel, to those that are Torah obedient. He, he will transfer the wealth of the wicked to the hand of the just. He will do it. The prophets and the Torah has said so. Next verse, 27. For all these abominations have the men of the land done, which were before you, and the land is defiled. And, you know, homosexuality, incest, rape, all sexual sin, which includes um, fornication, which includes um, adultery, premarital sex, idolatry, witchcraft, seances, uh, psychics, mediums, are all abominations in the eyes of Yahweh. And how much, everywhere you go in our nation, you see psychics, you know, their buildings on the street corners, come in for a palm reading, so on and so forth. Those are abominations as well as incest. Now, most people have no problem calling pedophiles an abomination, wicked defilement that Yahweh hates, but they, they accept homosexuality. You can't accept one and not the other. It's all defilement. It's all an abomination. And, and it's all things that Yahweh says that the land will vomit you out, that the land will not be productive. Why are we having the droughts? Why are we having the fires? Why are crops being destroyed? Um, animals being destroyed because of heat or whatever. Why is all these things happening? Because the land has been defiled, because of the, of the abominations that Yahweh says he hates, and unless America and every other nation renounces and repents of its abominations, the land will be destroyed, and those that own the land will be driven out and judged, and then that land will come to the people of Israel, come to the Torah observant people, and they will grow crops, they will raise animals, and they will not defile the land. Idolatry defiles the land. Worshiping on the first day of the week, worshiping pagan sun gods defiles the land. 
Keeping the seventh day Shabbat does not defile the land. Obeying Yahweh and calling him by his Hebraic name Yahweh does not defile the land. Calling the Messiah Yahshua does not defile the land. But calling him Jesus does. Worshiping all the statutes and the images and, and keeping the pagan sun god holidays does defile the land. Understand this. But there is hope if you will turn away from your defilements, from your abominations, and begin to obey the Torah, begin to obey what thus saith Yahweh. And keep his laws, his commandments, we read here in Leviticus 18, and over all the Torah and the prophets. Verse 29, For whosoever shall commit any of these abominations, it doesn't matter. Uh, uh, Israel co committed them. They kept going back to idolatry. So he says, for whosoever, which would include Israel, if you keep going back to idolatry, you keep going back to witchcraft, you keep going back to drug addiction, you keep going back to rock and roll and every other form of worldly music, you keep going back to things that defile or that are an, an abomination, Witchcraft movies, homosexual movies, sexual sin movies. He said, Whosoever shall commit any of these abominations, even the souls that commit them, shall be cut off from among the people. Or in other words, shall be cut off from Messiah. Shall be cut off from Yahweh. Shall be cut off from being part of his body. Now we read this in Galatians chapter 5, verse 23 and 24. Paul says that those that commit these things, these works of the flesh, shall not inherit the kingdom of heaven. See, he's just reiterating what the Torah says. Then in verse 30, therefore, shall you keep my ordinances shall you commit not any of these abominable customs which were committed before you and that defile and that you defile not yourselves and he's referring to when they were in Egypt and the customs of the pagan Canaanites he says you shall not defile yourselves with them then again he says I am Yahweh, the Mighty One, the Most High, your Elohim. <clears throat> you shall not defile them. You shall not defile, and he says, I am Yahweh. Again, I am Yahweh. I am Yahweh. Look real quickly to Leviticus, or Exodus 3. In uh, verse number 15. Start reading in verse 14. And Elohim said to Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thou shalt say unto the children of Israel, I am has sent me to you. And Elohim said more, moreover unto Moses, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, Yahweh Elohim of your fathers, the Elohim of Abraham, the Elohim of Isaac, the Elohim of Jacob, has sent me unto you. This is my name forever. And this is my memorial unto all generations. I am Yahweh. I am Yahweh. Now if you look in Isaiah 43, I believe it's 43. Let's turn there. Verse 3. 
It says, for I am Yahweh, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I gave Egypt for thy ransom. Now, if you look in verse 11, I, even I, am Yahweh. And besides me, there is no Savior. And verse 14, Thus saith Yahweh, Your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, for your sake I have sent, I have sent to Babylon and have brought down all their nobles, the Chaldeans, whose cry is in the ships, I am Yahweh, your Holy One, the Creator of Israel, your King. So it truly clarifies his name. And Yahweh said that these practices are an abomination. These practices are an abomination. Now, one more verse. Go to um, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, and we'll just read what Paul said in reference to the Torah of things that are abominations. So now, these have been following me for any length of time. These how I believe are not inflammation has so many are, negative sorry about effects that. on the body and the brain. How this got in here, devil I bind you in the power of Yahweh's name. Now go once again. The enemy's trying to mess with this message, that's for sure. So in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, we'll begin in verse 14, Paul re-emphasizing, Paul re-emphasizing what Yahweh said in the Torah. Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion has light with darkness? And what concord has Messiah with Bilal? And what part hath he that believes with an infidel? And then he says, verse 17, Wherefore come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith Yahweh. Touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. And will be a father unto you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, saith Yahweh. Now, to reiterate, there anything that Yahweh has commanded as an abomination, Messiah would never go against Yahweh. And so anybody that teaches anything that Yahweh says is an abomination, like we just taught, nowhere would Yahweh, in no way would Yahshua say, it's okay. It's acceptable. It's now clean. No. Yahshua said, he did not come to do his own will but the will of Yahweh that sent him. So that blows that right out of the water. Messiah's own words. He said he did not come to do his own thing. He did not come to change anything, but he came to do the commandments, the laws, the statutes, the judgments of the creator, Yahweh. And everything he did was in support of and in agreement with the commandments of Yahweh. Here, let me see if I can uh, pull that up real quickly. Um, let's see if 
I can get to it. Bear with me. I know it's in John. Um, let's see if this was it. Nope, that's not it. Um, let's see. It says, Yahshua came not to do his own will, but the will of the Father. Okay, I'll just Google it real quick. Uh, uh, it might be John 7. John, let's just go to John 7. See if we can, if that's it. Oh. Okay, I guess I'll have to Google it. Bear with me, please. John chapter 5, verse 30. It says, I can do nothing on my own. I can do nothing on my own. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just because I seek not my own will, but the will of him that sent me. Let's see, I thought, um, yeah, John 6, 38. John 6, 38. For I came down, I came, for I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. So, Yahshua, in two verses, said he, he came not to do his own will, but the will of the Father. The will of the Father. So, he came not to do the will of his own self, what he thought, whatever. He came to do the will of the Father. So, the abominations of Yahweh. Yahshua never, 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 never justified any type of what Yahweh calls an abomination. Sexual sin, witchcraft, idolatry, so on and so forth. Those are abominations. When you commit those things, it is an abomination to Yahweh, and if you keep living that lifestyle, you will be an abomination to the Most High. And there is only one way to come out of it. That is through the power of Yahweh, through the blood of the Lamb, and to turn away from that lifestyle. You cannot continue in that lifestyle and think you are part of the body of Messiah or that you are the part, you are part of Israel, or that you're Torah observant, or that you're born from above. No way, no way, no way, according to the scriptures. Now, if you want to try to justify it in your mind, you, you do what you feel is right. But according to the scriptures, and if you read Matthew 7, verse 21 through 23, those that are lawless, those that live their lifestyle breaking Yah's laws and commandments, he will say to you, depart from me, you who live a life of lawlessness or Torahlessness, or a life of sin, a life of breaking his laws and commandments. But if you struggle with something and you keep battling, you keep resisting it, you eventually will get the victory. You eventually will triumph in it, over it, through the Messiah, through Yahweh's laws and commandments. You will get the victory. I'm not saying it's easy. I'm not saying if you have same-sex attraction, it's easy. Or if you like smoking pot, or if you like getting drunk, it's easy to be delivered. I'm not saying it's easy to come out from masturbation or sexual fornication, or incest, or any other 
addiction or thing that Yahweh calls an abomination. But all things are possible to him that believes in Yahweh, that believes in the Messiah, that believes in the Torah, and that desires to live according to the Torah, that takes a stand of faith and resists it. How I've taught people over the years and how I did it myself, you keep resisting it long enough and it will flee from you. You keep saying the words, I resist the addiction to drugs. I resist you in the authority of Yahweh's name. I resist you by the power of the Ruach <clears throat> in the power of Yah's name. I resist you. And the scripture says it will flee as long as you keep willing and desiring to obey Yahweh's laws and commandments. Resist the devil, submit yourself to Yahweh, and it will flee, James said. So whenever you're tempted to get stoned, whenever you're tempted to listen to secular music, whenever you're tempted to do anything that is classified as an abomination to Yahweh, just resist it. And if you keep resisting it, you'll not give in to it. But if you give in to it, you're going to commit an abomination. You're going, to, you're going to open yourself up to the demons and to that lifestyle, and it will become harder and harder and harder. And eventually it will take you captive, and you will be lost. I went through that once in, in, the, in 1983. I gave in to it, and for six months, my life was so full of darkness. <clears throat> and eventually, Yahweh pulled me out. Praise Yahweh. But nonetheless, I encourage you, keep battling, keep fighting, keep resisting the enemy. Stop the abominations. Stop living any lifestyle that is an abomination. And turn to Yahweh. Come out from among that lifestyle of abomination, and Yahweh will receive you. Yahweh will set you free. Yahweh will empower, empower you. Yahweh will deliver you through the blood of the precious lamb. He nailed that, that addiction. He nailed that sin to the stake. He nailed that bondage to the stake. But you have a part to play in this. You have to do the resisting. You have to do the coming out of. You have to do the confessing that it's an abomination. You have to do whatever you have to do to be set free. And Father, I thank you for your mercy and grace. So I pray this teaching helps you. I pray that it gives you understanding and that you will come out from all the abominations of Yahweh that the scripture says is an abomination and that you would be made whole, that you would be set free, that you would be clean. And again, Yahweh, Yahshua did not set you free so that you would go back into that lifestyle. He set you free to be totally separated. So Father, we praise you. Father, we bless you. Father, we love you. Father, we thank you. Father, we renounce everything and anything that is in our life that is an abomination to you. We ask for your power. We ask for your help. We ask for your grace. We ask for your mercy to deliver us just like you did the children of Israel out of Egypt and just like you, you delivered um, and you drove out the Canaanites out of the land of Canaan and you gave it to Israel and you said not to participate in those customs any longer. We receive your empowerment. We receive your blessing. We receive your love. We receive your worship. We receive your deliverance as we worship you, excuse me, in the power of your name. And Father, we praise you. Father, we bless you. Father, we thank you. Father, we worship you that we are delivered by the blood of the Lamb. And Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Father, we bless you. Father, we worship you. Father, we lift up our hands to you and we say thank you for your deliverance. Thank you for setting us free. 
Thank you, thank you, Father. And those that are struggling, those that are having a hard time being set free, Father, by the power of your Spirit, yes. by the power of your name, by the power of your Torah, by your great grace and great mercy, impart into them. Do for them what you did for me, setting me free. Set them free, Father. Set them free and all others that have been set free from these abominations, whatever they were. Father, loose them. Set them free by your power right now in the power of your name. And Father, we thank you that we are no longer defiled. We thank you that we are living a lifestyle that is pleasing to you. We thank you, Father, for your great grace and your great power in and through the power of your name. If you want to connect with us, YahwehYeshuaAssembly.com is our website. If you want to connect with us on Facebook, Yahweh Yeshua Assembly. We have a Facebook page. We also, you can connect with me, Mark Pulley, P-U-L-L-E-Y, on Facebook. But until next time, Yahweh make his face shine upon you. Yahweh empower you to obey his laws and commandments. Yahweh strengthen you with might by his spirit in the inner man, that you would be strong in Yahweh and the power of his might, that you would put on the full armor of Yahweh, that you would resist the enemy, and that no weapon formed against you would ever prosper. And Father, we thank you for it. Father, we bless you. Father, we worship you. Father, we delight in you. And Yahshua, thank you for nailing these abominations to the stake so that we would be free from them and that we would no longer live a lifestyle in them, that we would come out from among them and be separate that we would come out from among them and that we thank you, Yahshua, that you have justified us as long as we keep following you. Yahshua said, as long as you keep obeying his, his, his words, his laws and commandments, his Torah, then you'll know the truth and the truth will set you free. So Father, we thank you today that you will take this message through many others and that you will impart it into this nation and other nations that those that are involved in these abominations would be set free, would be delivered, we would repent of them, would renounce them in the power of your name and they would, that they would live according to your laws, Yahweh, according to your judgments and your commandments. And Father, we love you. Father, we praise you. Father, we bless you. Father, we thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for your mighty deliverance. And we give you praise. Until next time, shalom, shalom.